hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel i'm super excited to share this video with you so guys if you've not subscribed to my youtube channel and you're watching this video please hit the subscribe button like share and i'll say subscribe again because subscriptions are very important for me so that said let's go straight to the tutorial First of all, go ahead uh, to fold your pattern paper into two, depending on your client's hip measurement or your hip measurement. So for this particular tutorial, I'm working with a hip 44 and dividing that by 4 is 11 inches so the pattern paper can actually take it. Um, once you're sure it will take um, it enough to take the hip, the hip measurement, now go ahead to start working on your project. So um, I went ahead to mark 7 inches on my pattern paper, that's for my waist measurement. That's because my waist measurement is 28 inches, dividing that by 4 is 7 inches. So including 1 inch for that, it's 8 inches. So I marked that on my pattern paper. Once you're done doing that, go ahead to take measurement from your waist downwards to your hip. That's 9 inches. So I went downwards from my waist by 9 inches. So once you're done doing that, go ahead to connect the dots to create your hip line. Now go ahead to take measurement from your waist to your new point. So for this project, measurement from the waist to the new is 23 inches. So I went ahead to mark that on my pattern paper. Okay, so once that is done, take measurement, your hip measurement. So my hip measurement is 11 inches. Now take away two inches and mark that on your new line. So I went ahead to mark nine inches on my new line. That is 11 minus two, which is nine inches. Once you're done doing that, go ahead to connect the dots from the new line to your hip line. Connect them together and now from your hip to your waist. Now, when you're connecting from your hip to your waist, always ensure that the hip area is not pointy. So to avoid that, it's always advisable that you use your hip curve or if you don't have a hip curve, just try as much as possible not to make that part pointy. Just avoid any weird look. Once you're done doing that, go ahead now. Let's take um I went ahead to like take my darts measurement. So um remember I included one inch initially, so I'm just going to divide one inch into two. That's half inch on both sides. I went downwards by eight inches. I went down by eight inches. The next thing you have to do is include your sewing allowance. So I went ahead to like include one and a half inch for sewing allowance. You can make yours more. Now I went ahead to like um, draw the new line that's the new with the sewing allowance. Once you're done with that, go ahead now to like take full measurement of your skirt. That is from waist to skirt to your ankle length. So my pattern paper was not long enough to carry from my waist to my ankle length. I included extra pattern papers just for that. When you're done doing that, go ahead now to just come up from your new point. Come up by, by 4 inches from your new line so my initial from my waist to my new list 24 inches 23 inches so subtract 4 from 23 that's about 19 inches so i'm going ahead i just went ahead to like mark that on my pattern paper to create a new line so it's now from this new line that we're going to be drawing that that um like that long flare so i'm just going ahead to like mark my um my skirt length that's from my waist to my ankle or if you want it flowing on the ground just that measurement your skirt measurement the full length of your skirts so i went ahead to like mark that on my pattern paper
done with that now the next thing is to take measurement you know the just take measurement from now we are just trying to like extend this dart line so you take measurement from that dart part downwards so make sure that it's equal like the measurements are the same so just come downwards from that to the end of the dart to the hem or to the end of your skirts now take your new measurement and transfer that to the end of your skirts so whatever measurement you had there just transfer it downwards so i went ahead to do that and i'm connecting it this way so at the moment you're done with that the next thing to do is just extend it to create that flare that flow around the the, the skirt the end of the skirt area so mind you we are taking this um like this rectangular this rectangular line i you, you're taking it from this new line that is above the new line not your new line but the new line we created above the new line so just go ahead to do that um so around this part like towards the the end of the skirt area you can make yours longer i made mine nine inches so you can make yours like the more the more inches you add or the more you add it becomes more flowy once you're done doing that just go ahead to just give it a slight curve around this area okay so remember we folded this from the beginning so the main reason why we did that was for us to be able to um, like cut out the back using the front so I went ahead to like cut out the I went ahead to like just cut from this from the waist downwards towards the new area and since I'm cutting them together it means you'll have the same shape both front and the back so I just used the front to cut the back basically Okay, so I'm done cutting the back using the front. So this is my what my back looks like. That's the back pattern, and this is what the front pattern looks like. So you can see they are equal, aside from this downward area, but upwards from the new part, they are kind of the same. So. Now it's time to just walk on the front. When we're done working on the front, we go to the back. Okay, now go ahead to just cut this part from this that area. Go ahead to like just cut this out. Now you have two panels. Remember, this is six pieces, so it means there are three in front, three at the back. But because of the zip at the back, the back it's more like four panels. So now you have two panels here um so now just go ahead to just um put your straight grain line on each of them just so you know and you won't mistakenly use one panel for the other or use the front for the back instead of the back um so you don't you don't mistakenly use the front for the back so i went ahead to just do that just to differentiate each of them so I just do that and just for your own good anyways once that is done go ahead to extend this other part like include extra pattern paper so you can see I included extra pattern paper and the same measurement I took from the right I did on the left so I took 9 inches here on this side I did the same thing on the other side so they are even and the same way I used my ruler to just connect it that was what I did on this other side as well now when I had to do the same thing on the other panel remember there were two panels in front so I did the same thing on this other side I just did only on the 
left side i didn't do on the right because i'm cutting this on food you're going to be cutting this on food so there's no need doing on this other side just do on the right side where you cut out the dart from now we're working on the back so on this back part before you start working or including extra pattern paper and all of that you should also have in mind that you need to like take full measurement of the skirt so that should be on your mind so whatever pattern paper extra pattern paper you're adding should should be long enough to carry the full length of your skirt so I, mean, I had to just draw my line for the full length of my skirt or my skirt's measurement Once you're done doing that, because this is the back of the skirt, you will need to be like a little shaping at the butt area. So um, I went ahead to mark one inch on both sides around this new new line. The new new line, not the old new line. So I marked one inch on both sides. Now I went ahead to I went ahead to connect that to my dart. Connect it to the hip line rather. Once you're done doing that, connect it also to the new area. So basically i just trying you just the the main reason of this shaping is for that butt area to just pop out a bit and to give it a little shape so the next thing you have to do is um now work on the zip area so um i didn't mention earlier that i included extra pattern paper around this center back so that um, I can include my um, my zip my zip allowance so I included like one inch for my zip allowance once you're done doing that you go ahead to also ship the zip part as well so guys you just go ahead to cut out just like you did for the front now you do the same thing here at the back just go ahead to just cut out this part and just like we did for the front where we extended that dart line downwards you do the same thing and use your scissors to cut out the well. part that are not so um, it's equal just like we did for the front once you're done doing that if you're done cutting out this part that's this dart area the next thing you should have in mind is extending the flare just like you did for the front you do the same thing here on the side so you just include 9 inch on this side on the right and 9 inches on the left as well you do the same thing on both sides just the same way we did for the front you do at the back on this particular one so after doing that, the next thing is that um, zip, that other panel that has the zip. Now this is the other panel, unlike the front where we only cut out, where we extended or we included the flare on one side only, here you would include the, the flare on both sides, that's including the flare on the right and on the left. Once you're done doing that, um, then your pattern paper is ready and you're good to go. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, give this video a big thumbs up, please like and subscribe. So now with this pattern paper, you this is the back. I'm just using this back to illustrate. So with this one, you cut two fabrics together with this pattern paper. So this is the outer seam. On this outer seam, we already included sewing allowance from the beginning, but this inner seam, I included half an inch sewing allowance because we didn't include that while we were cutting our pattern paper. So go ahead now to notch on this new area, notch them in a way that you can see it because there are times when I notch and I don't even see what I notched. 